Okay, then I will begin. Um, I'm talking, uh, well, I have a somewhat of funny title, don't, uh, don't take it uh, too serious, and, but I'm always ending up uh, talking about my personal problems, and, and so, so I do today. Um, we heard in the, um, during the day uh, lots of um, um, uh, stuff concerning migrations, huh? and, and this is uh, an issue uh, concerning us all. All and, and I will give you a, little, uh, a small technical insight uh, uh, because migrations are so important. Mm. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, in the Berlin State Library, which uh, is a really uh, large library, um, we have um, some, well, not many, but, uh, but some uh, Fedora of uh, four repositories for very different kinds of data. The, the most biggest one is the ITR the, um, from the East Asia department, uh, containing roughly 100 um, millions of objects. Uh, not books, but uh, individual pages. Uh, we store them individually. Um, this re repository is not open for the public, unfortunately. Uh, we have a repository for e electronic resources, uh, Born Digital, um, which also is not uh, available uh, to the public, only the binaries uh, the users can download. We have uh, um, a collection of uh, Prus Prussian um, judgments from 1880 to 1945, which was our, our, fourth, uh, which was our first uh, Fedora 4 project. Um, and um, uh, uh, very fresh, we have a bibliographical repository, which uh, containing no uh, binaries at all. Um, but there we are also use Fedora as a backend. So um, the, the landscape is, is quite heterogeneous. Um, and um, as uh, we we don't um, we don't put the data in one repository, but uh, we use uh, several uh, uh, ones, and uh, they came along with um, um, uh, different versions of Fedora four as well. So as uh, software uh, evolves, um, we should we would like to apply um, new versions of Fedora to the same data, and then of course. Uh, the data should independent of the, the software. And in one case, um, we still use um, an older Fedora version, namely uh, 4.5.1. Uh, uh, and um, we run in a serious problem. Uh, one day we had a power outage and the whole server, which uh, was a virtual one, uh, was shut down, shut down without any uh, warning. And um, then it started up as it should, but the Tomcat containing the Fedora application did not. And I had no idea why. And um, of course I checked the log files, what, what happened and I didn't find anything. Only after an hour or so, um, I, uh, I found the hint. And the problem was one file in the InfiniSpan layer, which is used by Modeshape in older Modeshapes, uh, in older Modeshape versions, had a bad um, operation system on them. Uh, it had not the, um, the operating system user Fedora owner, but the root, uh, it was owned by root, and then it could, couldn't be uh, read by the application, and the whole Tomcat did not start. Um, and, um, you know, okay, I, I could repair the problem, but uh, it took me more than an hour or so uh, to um, to fix the problem, and that seemed to me quite difficult. Um, and and that was bad because um, uh, we are forced by contract to uh, um, to present these data to the public. Well, I, I wouldn't have been uh, gone to jail if. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if it uh, had taken longer, but um, that, that was not a very nice um, uh, situation. And, and then I thought, oh, when 
in the case migrations would would be easier, then I would have um, fixed the problem earlier. Then I, I would have moved uh, to to another Fedora version before, or um, when I would have seen the application it, itself didn't work, then I would just have put the data to a, to a new version and um, um, and done. But that's still, um, as we know all, it's quite uh, quite difficult to to, um, to migrate the data. It's possible, and, but uh, we we are all relay, relaying in, in some sort of uh, um, uh, self-made uh, software to to do this. All, uh, although Fedora uh, gives us some possibilities, and. That's why we believe that OCFL, the Oxford Common File Layout, uh, layout could uh, solve our problems in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that was it. Thank you for uh, your attention. <laughs> Thanks, Oliver. Um, yeah, we have a few minutes for questions if anyone would like to unmute uh, or type into the chat and I'll try to keep an eye on that. Um, I have a question. Um, how um, how big is the data in the repository? Well, uh, that repository is is quite small. Uh, just um, four gigs of data, uh, thirty thousand objects, which is not a big repository. But if that had happened in in a bigger one, then uh, we would have a, uh, we had a problem. So it would have been easily to restore the, all the data from scratch. Uh, do you use also um, linked data? I mean, the information that you store in Fedora is also forward linked data? Well, not to the public, not oh, yet. Okay. Get it. Thanks. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the uh, the OCFL stuff, uh, Oliver, I, I do think that um, that one of the things you talked about um, with regard to migrations and, and the fact that the data shouldn't change, you know, going forward, that it, you're right, that that is a um, one of the driving factors behind um, adopting OCFL in, in version six. And our, our intent is for future versions of Fedora to continue to use OCFL. And so, we ideally we will not need to do these, you know, difficult data migrations in the future the way that we do now. Yeah, when I uh, when I detected the, the real error, then it um, the idea idea came to me that in some sort the InfiniSpan layer is a little bit of a mix of application and data, and and, and that's not good. Anymore. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a reason why even mode shape sort of yeah. moved away from InfiniSpan and, and <laughs> why we're moving away from mode shape. So, yeah, lessons learned, I suppose. But uh, yeah. that's, that's where we are. One, uh, but uh, we all learn every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, we get to that future when the the data is fixed and and you know applications simply conform to the data rather than requiring these uh, difficult migrations. But uh, Thank you for the uh, uh, for the update and um, 